Welcome to Zelly at the Movies and Kids First. Today I'm talking to director Annie Diamini about his new film, For Kids and It. Hi Annie, how are you? I'm very well, thanks. Very, very Where are you right now? Uh, a very hot London, actually, which is quite a nice change. It's fun. So this novel was by Jacqueline Wilson, and it's based on the original book in 1902. This story, I feel like it's a lot more modern, you know, with the parents dating and them separating. And I think it shows that even if your parents get divorced, it doesn't break the family and you still have that special family bond. Yeah. Um, what ideas did you mainly want to explore with this new story? Um, I suppose the, the overarching theme is be careful of what you wish for. Yes. Uh, but I think what's interesting within Jacqueline's work is the modern family, really. Uh, dysfunctional, merged, different parents, split families. So it's the, the territory that she deals with so well and she doesn't pull any punches. She gets right inside that. I think there's a chance to uh, expand on that. And I think there's a, a good family story within that, seeing the kids come together and form a new family uh, and the positive nature of that. So I think it was, uh, yes, it, that theme within the book is what appealed from my point of view. Yeah, and I love that whenever a kid makes a wish, they always include each other, like um, when Smash, when she wanted to be a pop star, she still like got the helicopter for the other kids, and whenever they want to fly, it's like they're all flying. It's very special, and all the kids are involved in everything. So, yeah. I love that this is a beautiful message for everyone. Um, what is your favorite message that you wanted to really tell with this film? It was, the, I, I think the thing I enjoy, or the thing that touches me most in the, in the story, is the children opening up to a new parent. And I think that, you, you feel that resistance, which I think is very natural in any child, but this is a very common thing now we all go through and seeing them come together and, and engage with the other parent, for me, those are the bits that sort of touch you, yeah. I actually talked with Ashley a couple of days ago and she was very nice and so bubbly and friendly. So how was it working with all the kids on set? I have to say that we were very lucky in the casting on this um, and they bonded so incredibly well. The difficulty was trying to film some of the earlier scenes where they didn't know each other <laughs> when and that might have been out of order and by that stage they're really tight friends but um, no it was great. We started with Ashley, uh, the year, we nearly shot the year before um, and she was such an, a fantastic talent, so enthusiastic. Um, I remember she sang to me online uh, and she's got a terrible voice, but the enthusiasm <laughs> is fantastic. Um, and she really sold it. And uh, so we were locked into her. So then it was finding a sister for her. And we came across Roz. We were very open casting. We tried not to go the sort of stage school route. We wanted somebody who was a bit more rooted and real. And we came across um, Teddy uh, through that. And she was a, another great find. And those two were the key that have really got to carry the film. So we were very lucky. And so working with them was a joy. I mean, you have to deal with them all in different ways. And Ellie May, who played Morty, who's only five, you know, had to talk with it in a different way and getting her to feel she was being real in the world and letting go was a challenge. I had a lot of sweets in my pockets for that. Um, but uh, yes, they were, they were great. I think something about the bond of the four of them made the whole thing a lot easier. And they got on very well with Matthew and Paula, so the families gelled very well. That's great. Um, and you filmed in London and in Ireland. So how was it doing with the weather? Because I know a lot of these scenes were like shot outdoors, and I know it rains a lot. Yes. Ashley started telling me about how it wasn't too, too rainy, so... No, no. I mean, what you realize once you start unpicking the story, because it all revolves around the sunsets and okay. sunrises, the weather's incredibly dependent. We sort of needed good sunsets or at various points in the script. So we decided to go to the wettest country in the world and try and get there. <laughs> um, so, but Ireland came true for us and was great weather and we got lots of great sunsets, which are a key turning point for the story. Um, so it was great. And then we, we had to finish various elements here back in London um, with the O2 and helicopters and so on. But uh, yes, the final pieces of the jigsaw back in London. Um, I thought the sunsets were beautiful when I was watching the film. They were all shot very nicely. Thank and you. so we already kind of talked about how it was working with the kids, but my mom was telling me about how she had this unforgettable interview with Michael Caine. So <laughs> how is it working with him and why did you choose him to be the voice of it? Um, on the page, the script was quite grumpy. 
it's quite funny as well and charming, but I think we, we, we sort of latched onto Michael at a very early stage because it's such an iconic, curmudgeonly old grumpy voice, but he's such a charming man. And he brought that side with him. So because we filmed him for all the, the creature work, as well as his voice, we filmed the facial expressions, the movement in the face, and his hands and arms and everything. We used that in the animation of the creature. So a lot of him came out, but he was lovely. He thought the story was, was very funny. And uh, <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he loved the, the farting creature, he said. <laughs> um, but yeah, he was great. And it was great because you're describing everything to him. At that stage, we hadn't made the creature. We hadn't filmed anything. So the whole thing's a description. And he's able to take that all in and process himself into a moment in the middle of the film with such precision. It was incredible to watch. But he was very charming and uh, very lovely. He was desperate to show it to his grandparents, his grandchildren, I mean. Um, once it was finished. That's amazing. And I also wanted to ask you, how was it? Because it it was like a green sack or something. I know Ashley was telling me it was like this weird green thing. But how was it actually editing and everything? Because I know it like blew up whenever you asked to wish. And it was great. And it also like dug underneath the sand. And was that complicated to like? Um, a little bit, a little bit. We, with the flying, you've probably seen people flying before on wires when you fly people. Uh, and that can be quite limited, and I wanted a bit more of a three-dimensional thing. So we actually put the children on a robot arm. Mm -hmm. was able to spin them around and move them around in every direction. So we were to get much more three-dimensional flying. And the, the difficulty was getting the children off it afterwards. Ellie maybe had to keep bribing her with another go and another go to try and persuade her off it. So they loved it, but it meant we could do a lot of interesting flying work with that. Um, and things like the sand, we spent a lot of time on the beach playing around with spades and putting things under the sand and trying to get that sort of thing to work. So uh, yes, I guess that they were interesting little challenges, but quite a nice place to be working them through. It's great that you guys had fun as well when you were filming, so you had like that special bond. Um, so wishes are an amazing thing and wishes can come true through films as well. Um, Ashley went to London, she's always wanted to do that and that was really special for her. So. Do you think films are a way to fulfill our biggest wishes in life? Yes, I think we. I think you can show people what might be. I think you can open up people's minds to things they don't necessarily experience. So you're sort of giving wishes, and you're showing things how they can be, how you'd like them to be, and in, and educating, lightening people with new new worlds and new things. So I think you can take people to new places in film. Thank you so much for talking with me. I had such an amazing time talking to you. Make sure to check out 4Kids in It on all digital platforms on June 30th. It's and it. Ah, what sorcery is this? The Angry Birds? I'm not surprised. Trapped for all eternity in a prison. 